Hello, this is Moodle Chahabi and this is our first video of Adobe After Effects course. In this course, we'll start from scratch. We will learn everything about Adobe After Effects, starting with the interface and compositions, keyframes, and how to do animation, 3D, how to use the camera option, removing green screens, expressions, shapes, mask, timeline, plugins, and effects. We will go together from zero to hero in this course. Without any further ado, let's start. The most asked questions from beginners, should I learn After Effects or Premiere Pro? Actually, both programs are different. After Effect is a compositing video program, which means you open a new composition and you start creating your video or your animation. You start with a blank canvas. While Premiere Pro, you have to have a material or a video ready to use in there. Secondly, After Effect deals with small size videos, 30 seconds and up to a few minutes video. However, Premiere Pro deals with long videos could reach out to hours. Also, After Effects deals with the layer concept, just like Photoshop. Wireless Premiere Pro uses tracks. After Effects is a compositing video program creates animation, motion graphic, and visual effects. Wireless Premiere Pro is an editing program specialized in montage. Let's start and open our program. You are most likely to get this window at first. Here are the most recent files you have used. It's beneficial to name your files and your layers before you start. This way you would know the file from the caption. If you look at my last file here, it says untitled project. Now I don't know which file is that. You will have to open lots of files till you get to the file that you want. And here comes the importance of naming your files and your layers as you're working. On the left side, you have a new project or open a project that already exists in your computer. We will go with new project. This is the main program interface. This view could vary from version to another. In the top left here, there is the menu bar, just like all Adobe programs. In the middle of the screen, you will find the new composition option. As we mentioned earlier, After Effects deals with compositions. So you can open a new composition from here. or go to Composition, New Composition, or just press on Ctrl N. Or from this panel here, you can see the composition icon. It says create a new composition. Just click on it, whichever easier for you. Once you open the new composition, you will get the preset window. First, we will name our file, let's say Introduction. Then here from basic, you have lots of presets for your video size. This first part here is for TV, if you're gonna broadcast your video on TV. In the second part here, you have the HD sizes, the full HD sizes, with multiple options for frame per second. You also have the 2K option, as well as the 4K option. If you are not sure which size you choose, you can choose customize and put your own size. I will go with the full HD size 1920 by 1080. Pixel aspect ratio, just leave it as it is. The frame rate varies from one video to another, but most of videos go between 24 and 30 frames per second. Unless you want to make a slow motion video, in this way you will have to use a higher frame rate, like 60 or 120. I will go with 30. With the resolution option, you have full, half, third, and quarter. This is not the video resolution. This is not the output resolution. It's only the preview resolution on the screen. Some projects are big and heavy on your computer, so the preview might be slow. Also, it depends on your computer capabilities. And here comes the importance of this option. 
lower your preview resolution to have a smooth preview of your project. You can always change this as you go. I go with full at first. Start time code. The program is asking when I want to start my video. I will leave it zeros as it is. The duration of your video. The standard size of the program is 30 seconds. I will also leave it as it is. Now to the background. This is here a virtual background. It doesn't actually exist. If you exported your video, this background won't be seen. To have a background for your video, you will have to create it inside your composition. We'll see this later as we work. Then hit OK. This is our composition and we'll start importing our pictures or logos. You can double click inside this panel here or go to file then import or just control I. Let's import something. To start using the image or video or audio that you have imported, you will have to add this to the timeline. Anything that is not inside the timeline won't appear on your video. So hold and drag your item and drop it into your timeline. And just like Photoshop from any corner, you can just resize your item. And from this eye icon, you can hide or show your layer. This is here our timeline and it's flexible. You can reduce the size. You have multiple options in here. If you don't use all of them, you can still hide some of them. Just right click on anyone and you choose hide this and so on. And if you want to bring them back, just click on this icon here, Expand Layer Switches Panel. This is the Timeline Indicator, which is responsible of reading your video. We will talk about the animation and the video in details in our next video. So, a new composition from here, or from this icon, or Ctrl N. To import a file, double click in this panel or from file, import, or just control I. Or right click inside this panel and you will find the import option in here, whichever easier for you. Inside this panel here, if you have multiple files, pictures, videos, audios, sometimes you work with large projects, so we need to organize our files. You see this new folder icon here? Make a new folder and give it a name. I will name it Unyubi. Those files were for Unyubi course. Select your files and drag them inside this folder. This way you organize your files and less likely to get lost. Anytime you need to work on a file, just hold it and drag it inside your timeline. This is a video file. To play it, just press on the spacebar from your keyboard. If you want to remove something from your timeline, just select it and hit delete from the keyboard. Now we knew how to create a new composition, how to import our files, how to organize our data and files inside our folders, and how to place our items inside the timeline. Now to the top toolbar. Starting with the selection tool, to hold and move your items. The shortcut is V, just like all Adobe programs. Next to it, the hand, to hold and move the whole composition. The shortcut is H, or spacebar. Even if the hand option is not selected, you can still move your composition from the spacebar. Hold and move the composition. And with the scroll in your mouse, without pressing anything like Alt or Control, you can scroll up and down to enlarge or reduce the view of your composition. Next, we have the zoom option with the shortcut Z if you want to zoom in. And with the Alt option, you can zoom out. The rotation tool and shortcut W to rotate your layer. Select one corner and start rotating. And if you press on Shift, you will move with 45 degrees angles. Next is the camera, and we'll talk in details about this in a separate video. 
Next to it is the anchor point and the shortcut Y. What's the anchor point? We will use this a lot once we start doing animation. Let's delete this and get the shape tool and draw a rectangle. I don't need a fill and white strokes fine. Draw a shape. My shape got into my timeline already. You see here my anchor point is not set to the center. So take the anchor point tool and center it. This will help you a lot once you start doing your animations. Next we have shapes. Long click on the icon to open the menu so you can see all the shapes. If you got the star shape, you can press on the space bar to move your shape up and down or right or left. While you still hold in your mouse click, you can press on Alt and Shift to preserve your dimension. If you pressed on the right side arrow from the num lock, you will round the edges. And if you press on the top arrow, you will increase your shape. And the bottom arrow, you will reduce it again. Next is the pen tool. Same as the Photoshop used for drawing or selection. Next to it you have the type tool, the brush, the clone stamp, the eraser tool and more. We'll go through each one of them as we go. And from the right side here you have the info panel, preview, all those panels you can find them in window. Last thing here is our preview window. This is my composition. You can find the name here. Here is the preview ratio. I set it to fit. Here is your video timer. And here is the preview resolution. As we mentioned earlier, if your video is heavy or slow, you have the option to reduce the resolution and it won't affect your final video resolution. Once you export your video, you can choose the full resolution back. Here is the active camera. We will talk more in details about this in the camera video, as well as the views. Now I need to organize my workspace area to my convenience. Whatever panels I don't use much, right click and close panel. I use preview, cause from here I can always play my video. Library, close panel, effects and presets, I need it. Character too. I also need a line. You can hold and move the panel to place it next to another panel. Just hold and drag it. I will do the same with the effects panel. Hold it till you see that blue line. I will do the same with the character. This way I gather all my essential panels in one place. And just from the arrows here, you can go through them. Or you can stretch the panel to see what's inside. This is now my favorite interface. I have my project details in the top left corner. Underneath it I have my files. Then my timeline here is stretched all over the bottom area and my favorite or much used panels on the top right corner. Once you fix your layout to your favorite, go to Window, Workspace, and save as a new workspace. Give it a name, let's say Favorite. Now if you close the program and reopen again, you will get the same interface. Or if you messed up the layout and moved or misplaced any panel, simply go back to Window, Workspace, and reset favorite to saved layout and everything will come back as you previously saved it. Well, that was everything for our first video in this course. In our second video, we'll talk more about compositions and how to import a PSD or AI file with multiple layers, as well as we'll start some basic animations. We'll talk more about the keyframes and graph editor. Stay tuned and have a great day. Bye bye.